Soil is rotted rocks and decomposed organic matter. It's about half space. And a rock dissolves in water and releases nutrients and becomes different size particles of sand, silt, and clay, okay? Clay is a special thing called a secondary mineral that forms when primary minerals, meaning rocks like this, when they dissolve, they recrystallize at the surface of the earth. This can dissolve and then recrystallize into something called clay. Clay is a different thing. It's not just a rock. It's a secondary mineral that's formed when rocks dissolve in water and recrystallize. And when that happens, look what's released. Look, silica, aluminum, those are uh, magnesium, potassium. Those are nutrients that are dissolved out of primary rocks. And some of these minerals actually form secondary minerals called uh, clay, which are sheets of silica and aluminum oxide. Clay is a very, 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 very tiny layered high surface area thing that has a negative charge on it. And you know what sticks to negatively charged things? Positively charged things. And you know what the charge on most mineral nutrients that you need that in your body? Positively charged. So a positively charged nutrient that dissolves out of the rock sticks temporarily onto clay. But you look at the clay and you find out what the cation exchange capacity of that soil is. And that is the ability, the number of negative charges per kilogram of dry soil is the cation exchange capacity. That's what cation, and that, so that number, the higher that number is, the more nutrients it can store. The more nutrients it can store, the more plants it can grow and capture more energy from the sun and more carbon from the atmosphere. And that's what soil is. Organic matter itself increases the cation exchange capacity of the soil. So it can capture more energy and carbon and make more organic matter and accumulate more organic matter. So there's more cation exchange capacity. So it can grow more plants, which makes for more organic. See how that works? That's what soil building is. And that's what you need to just do. You just need to help it do that. It does it on its own. I mean, there was a time before us and the soil rules. The soil still rules. So adding compost adds mineral nutrients and energy from the sun and billions in a single pinch bi biota. Cover crops do something that compost can't. Cover crops push roots into the ground and then they die and they push it into the ground and they keep doing that over and over and over and they leave behind large holes. Compost doesn't do that. Now worms do and bugs do that eat the compost. So that's why you add compost and that's why you grow cover crops and that's why you minimize disturbance and leave crop residues. And what you're trying to prevent is erosion really because when, you, when soils erode, you lose the clay first. When you see dirty water running down a, a stream, that's the clay. And you know what clay is? Clay is a secondary mineral. It has a negative charge. It can store nutrients. So when you have erosion, you're losing the cation exchange capacity, which allows the soil to grow and to, to, to build. And when you start losing that, you're going the other way. And so what you want are soils that are high in organic matter. And when they get wet, they still have large macropores and drain. Where here's a soil that's low in organic matter. Once it's wet, all the macroporosity just falls away. And that's all that. And, and you don't have the, 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 the air anymore. And they become anaerobic. And wet, cold soils don't germinate seeds very well. <clears throat> in fact, Wet, cold soils are good habitat for most diseases of plants because plants are at their weakest when they're cold and wet. And diseases have adapted to living under those conditions because the plant's defense mechanisms are lowered. And that's why they attack them. And that's why, that's why your, your pumpkins at the end of the season get powdery mildew because the fungi don't mind it being cold and wet. And the plant is kind of like dying. And then they just eat it. And you know why the disease is eating it? Just to get the carbon and the energy and the mineral nutrients, just like you. So let's talk about erosion really quickly. Erosion is initiated by the impact of the raindrop. And when that happens, 
that it doesn't seem like a lot of energy, but on bare soil, a large raindrop can go about 20 kilometers an hour. And when it hits the ground, it actually explodes out air and it actually detaches particles. And you know which particles are detached the easiest? The clays, the small ones, and the organic matter, the, the lightweight stuff, the stuff that floats. And, the, and those are the two things that have the negative charge. And when they get detached, and then the flowing water is what takes it away. But it's the impact of the raindrop that actually detaches the particles. So if you can just have a little bit of ground cover, even 10%, think about this, 10% cover of some sort of plants growing or some sort of mulch, 10% reduces the erosion rate by 50%. And if you can have 50% cover over, on, over the bare soil, you get a 90% reduction in erosion because a little piece of, of, of leaf that's sitting on the soil surface takes up that impact of the raindrop or it hits a, a leaf first and then it drips another six inches and it doesn't have the impact power. So, you want to minimize disturbance. You want to maximize the amount of organic matter. You want to grow cover crops. You want to minimize tillage. And you also want to leave cover. And that's another function of cover crops is that they protect against these erosion mechanics.